Hello everyone and yep, happy Sunday of course and you know why I'm wearing this outfit right now so as I'm currently recording this video it is Batik's day or Batik's national day or something so I'm kind of celebrating the fact that today is Batik's day so I'm wearing Batik as my outfit or in the Hari Batik National. So that's it. So maybe you can wear it sometimes when you attended a virtual school or something in in a way to celebrate that Batik is actually exists in Indonesia and it's a very good outfit. Okay. And so I hope you guys, my little brother and sisters, having uh, such a joyful heart, a joyful day, a grateful heart uh, with so many things happening right now. Uh, I hope you guys still enjoy yourself with your friends or your family and with your daily responsibility and everything. I hope you guys still enjoy it. Okay, so do you know the song? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart. Yes, I knew it. I knew that you guys knew the song. <laughs> so, so that's it. Uh, let's sing the song. So uh, everyone, before we listen to the sermon and before we listen to the scripture reading, let's pray together, okay? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to listen to your scripture, to listen to your sermon. Please bless and prepare our heart and mind so that we might listen to it with a grateful heart with a heart and mind that knew that this is something that comes from the lord and this is something that will rejoice us that will bring something good to our life thank you lord jesus christ in the name of jesus christ we pray amen Tenants of a Vineyard Jesus told the chief priests and leaders to listen to this story. A landowner once planted a vineyard. He built a wall around it and dug a pit to crush the grapes in. He also built a lookout tower. Then he let his vineyard and left the country. When it was harvest time, the owner sent some servants to get his share of the grapes. But the tenants grabbed those servants. They beat up one, killed one, and stoned one of them to death. He then sent more servants than he did the first time, but the tenants treated them in the same way. Finally, the owner sent his own son to the tenants because, he thought, they would respect him. But when they saw the man's son, they said, "'Some day he will own the vineyard.' Let's kill him, then we can have it all for ourselves. So they grabbed him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Jesus asked, When the owner of that vineyard comes, 
What do you suppose he will do to those tenants? The chief priests and the leaders answered, He will kill them in some horrible way. Then he will let his vineyard to people who will give him his share of grapes at harvest time. Jesus replied, Surely you know that the scriptures say, The stone that the builders tossed aside is now the most important stone of all. This is something the Lord has done, and it is amazing to us. I tell you that God's kingdom will be taken from you and given to people who will do what he demands. Anyone who stumbles over this stone will be crushed, and anyone it falls on will be smashed to pieces. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard these stories, they knew that Jesus was talking about them. So they looked for a way to arrest Jesus, but they were afraid to, because the people thought he was a prophet. So everyone, uh, today we will learn about God's mercy, or God's forgiveness. Uh, so, as you know, this is a story about a landowner. It is a story about a landowner. So there's a landowner, so someone who owns a land, and he he wanted to go. He wanted to go to somewhere else on a journey, and before he went to his trip. He somehow uh, gave the responsibility to someone else, to other person, to manage uh, his vineyard. So that's it. After a while, he went to a trip on a journey. And then what happened? What happened afterward? If you listen to the script, our scripture reading, you would know it. When the harvest time approached. He sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. So apparently he come back from his long journey, from his trip, and then he come back and sent his servants to gather, to collect the fruit, to collect the result, to collect the outcome of uh, from his vineyard. But then what happened? If you listen, this is what happened, right? The tenants says his servants, so servants, so there's a lot, it wasn't just like one servant, but there are actually three servants. They beat one, the first one, mm. they kill another, wow, and stone a third. So actually they beat one, they kill the second, and they stone the third servant. So that's actually terrible right so it's very very terrible a horrible thing a horrible thing to do but that's actually what happened that's actually what happened so I'm sorry my, my hair messed up so then he sent other servants so it, it wasn't just like first time the second time he also sent another servant more than the first time and the tenants treated them the same way they kill them. That's it. So, and the last but not least, he sent his own son, his very own son. But then what happened? They also killed him. That was a horrible thing to do, okay? Don't ever do it. That's a bad thing, okay? That's a bad thing. So, do you guys know? Who is exactly the landowner? Do you guys know it? God. Yes, it's God. And the servant? The servant is a lot of people. And we call them prophets. Okay? So actually, it's about God sending a prophet to warn, to tell the people, to educate the people, to be the right hand of God, to guide the people of Israel and the follower of God. But then what happened? They didn't believe in, in them. 
it's still for them it's still just another day okay they told something okay okay i'm sorry god i'm sorry i'm following you again but then what happened they have sinned again they committed a mistakes a grave mistakes and god's oh, it's satan it's satan in the, the the heart of god every single time and then there's also the ultimate chance the ultimate redemption and forgiveness god's ultimate mercy he sent his own son do you know who that is yeah jesus christ our lord and savior but then what happened what happened to jesus christ <sighs> yep same old story same old story at first though people thought that ah he's pretty good he'd be probably the real deal but at the end of the day crucify him we don't want him kill him that's what happened that's what happened with the people they do not they didn't want forgiveness they didn't want redemption through Jesus Christ. So they killed him. They crucified him. Before that, they tortured him. And eventually Jesus Christ was dead. But then he rose again, right? Of course, he's not dead. He's not really dead. He rose again. But then the people rejected him. Just like the tenants, okay? Well, the landowner, God, sent a lot of chances, gave us a lot of chances throughout the history. And also for you and for me. They gave, God gave us a lot of chances and the ultimate redemption is through Jesus Christ. Have you guys believed in Jesus Christ with wholeheartedly? Have you believed in Him? Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ wholeheartedly? Let, let it be us. Don't be like them. Let us be faithful and truthful and kind to one another. Because we knew deep down in our heart that Jesus Christ has already saved us. Sacrifice His life so that we might have eternal life and redemption yeah so we have to be grateful for it don't be like the tenants they were ungrateful they didn't know the true meaning of redemption of god's mercy and salvation and also forgiveness God gave them the first chances, they beat the first chances, they kill another chances, and stone the third chances, and then still the ultimate chances for forgiveness. They kill him. They kill the chance through Jesus Christ. So let us put our faith, our mind, our, our faith and our heart and our whole life to be the offering to God and be grateful, be kind to one another because we knew that we believe in Jesus Christ, the one that that is the representation of God's mercy. It's actually very wonderful, okay? Yeah, I know I have seen, you have seen daily maybe, uh, I have committed mistakes, a lot of mistakes. All of us committed a lot of mistakes, but it didn't mean that it just end there. There's always a redemption. There is always a chance from God for us is if, if we are willing wholeheartedly to seek to us for forgiveness and actually try to not and willing to try to not do it again. So that's that's the most important thing. Okay? So don't be like the tenants.
be grateful for the chances, be grateful that we're actually here believing in Lord Jesus Christ. Be grateful, be kind to one another, have mercy to one another, because God, through Jesus Christ, has shown us the ultimate chances of mercy, of forgiveness and redemption, so that we might be able to forgive one another. Okay? Let's pray. Lord, thank you very much for this sermon. Thank you very much for the story. Thank you very much for the lessons from our scripture reading. Uh, we hope that we might be able to forgive, to be kind, to have mercy to one another. Because you, Lord, have, show, have shown your mercy through Jesus Christ at the first place. Thank you very much, Lord. We are grateful for you. We are grateful for the redemption, for the salvation, for the forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.